and gentlemen. Welcome to Wednesdays in Wiedemann and our second in this semester's series. Uh, this is a very good time to be able to celebrate the 500th anniversary of the Reformation and Martin, led by Martin Luther, 1517 to 2017, that's, that's quite a date. And as we demonstrated in our first Wednesdays of Wiedemann on February 1st, a uh, program in de dedicated entirely to J.S. Bach, one of the most fervent uh, users of chorale tunes, and many of them written by Martin Luther himself. Today we have three works, two by Bach, both in E minor, and two by Louis Marchand, who was a contemporary of Bach, both of those works in D, or in the, the first church ton or, or mud, mode. Uh, the first piece is a, a one of the Leipzig chorales, uh, and the hymn tune, Jesus Christus Unser Heiland, or Jesus Christ Our Savior, was written by Martin Luther in 1524. This is an old hymn for communion to be played during, during the, the service and was treated four times by Bach during his career. This particular version uh, is very probably the last written in his hand before he actually became uh, blind and during the last months of his life. It's one of the most elaborated chorale preludes in all of his works. Musically, from a standpoint of the strict, rigorous four-voice counterpoint, beautiful counterpoint that you'll hear, but also in one of the best, most brilliant word-music relationships, uh, where the verse of the hymn is treated, and you have this in your program, by each phrase, Jesus Christ our Savior with the, the beautiful serenity of a solid meditation in the knowledge as, of Christ as Savior. The second verse, uh, who has turned away God's wrath from us, God's anger, where we hear a sort of disorderly counterpoint with large intervals and dissonances. The third verse is through his bitter suffering, and Christ's suffering is shown through very tortuous and intense chromaticisms, uh, descending mo for most part. And then the fourth, and saved us from the torments of hell. We are saved, and we're beautiful flourishes, and the number of go voices going from four to eight, compounding themselves in the end, in explaining and exclaiming the victory of eternal life or over infernal damnation, which is always eminently inspiring and hopeful in J.S. Bach's works. Choral Prelude, Jesus Christus Unser Heiland, Sub Communione Pedaliter de J.S. Bach, in his hand, by Johann Sebastian.
Louis Marchand, contemporary of Johann Sebastian Bach. He was one of the most grand uh, French organ virtuosos of his time, lived at the same time as Francois Couperin, as if you know that, that name uh, from the dynasty of that great family. He was rumored, and of course this is an anecdote, it can't be proved, but it's a, it's a good anecdote to, to tell that during his stay in Germany, where he was for three years, uh, that he and Bach were to have met in Dresden and to measure their respective talents, to see well, who, who was the strongest, or at least compare the two. Well, but Marchand apparently left before they could do that, and, and this is still just an anecdote, but it's nice to tell. He left little written music, on the contrary uh, of Bach, but the first pieces from his premier livre, his first book, uh, is, are all gems. The Récit is a solo, uh, a moment of pure poetry with flourishes of ornamentation that always appear in, in Baroque music. It is from, can be a commentary from the Gloria of the Catholic Mass, to solus altissimus Jesu Christe, you the most high, Jesus Christ. The bass de trompette, bass de trompette, would correspond to the deposuit potentes decedes, decede, from the Magnificat, and that is he hath put down the mighty from their seat, and you will see from the theme in the trumpet, and it's this trumpet that you're going to hear, the Spanish trumpet, with eight, four, and two flutes from the Wesi, and with a dialogue of the corne from the great. Uh, it's interesting to note that the differences between the French organ and the German organ at that time, the French organ is all about colors, reeds, uh, trumpets, great grand clairons, bombard, and, and flutes, and deta detailed stops. And the German organ with its brilliant mixtures and the plenum, which you will hear a lot of in the Prelude and Fugue in e minor, uh, the last piece. But for now, Louis Marchand, Récit et Basse de Trompette. Thank you. 
After the greatest and grandest prelude and fugue by Bach, without a doubt. Bach himself was a great virtuoso, and many of his contemporaries wrote that uh, he could play for hours and improvise for hours. And this is from his last period around 1730. The prelude is, is a profusion and richness of musical figures. And the fugue, the longest of Bach's fugue, with a special wedge-shaped subject, which means that it starts and goes one way this way and the other this way, so that's, that's the wedge. <laughs> and you'll hear it you know, rather than I try to sing it. <clears throat> this is by far the most virtuosic of Bach's organ works, with flourishes and sequences. And using the, the German organ plenum, which is the full organ with mixtures, principal chorus and mixtures, all the way through, which in itself is a, is a, is a strength, is a symbol of strength. And, but it always heralds Bach's enormous faith in an uplifting and a supremely inspirational uh, vision of heaven on earth. Box, Prelude and Fugue in E minor. <laughs> 